In March 2020, at the beginning of the pandemic, I continued to hear the same warning echo in my spirit. The food supply is next. I wrote an article on 365prophetic.com about how the next sign of the times would look something more like a famine. Prophetically, I saw a contamination coming to some of the food supply that would result in shortages in some areas, as well as sicknesses and deaths. Prophetically, I saw people rushing to order online, putting strain on the overall food supply chain. We have since seen all of this, but what we could see next is even more troubling. Industry watchers are now agreeing food shortages are inevitable due to Russia's war on Ukraine. This is Jennifer LeClaire, and this is Praying the News. On today's broadcast, we're going to look at how a prophetic warning I offered two years ago is manifesting, as well as how the nations are responding to a potential famine-like food crisis, and a 2015 prophetic word from the late prophet John Paul Jackson. Welcome to Praying the News. Today's broadcast is sponsored by my new book, The End Times Watchman. Get equipped to watch and pray in the end times. With a forward by Mike Bickle, you're going to find practical strategies to help you walk out your calling as a prophet, as a watchman, as a seer in the last of the last days. Check it out at jenniferleclair.org slash end times watchman. Reports of potential famine abound. Listen in to President Biden's thoughts from his recent trip to Brussels. Nothing more to report. With regard to food shortage, yes, we did re- re- so talk about food shortages. And, uh, and it's going to be real. The, the price of these sanctions is not just imposed upon Russia. It's imposed upon an awful lot of countries as well, including European countries and our country as well. Meanwhile, leaders from the G7, which includes the U.S., Japan, Canada, the U.K., France, Germany, and Italy, as well as the European Union, pledged to do everything they can to address the issue, as well as provide Ukraine with, quote-unquote, sustainable food supply in the crisis. Throughout the pages of the Bible, we see famines, so this really should come as no surprise, especially considering the words of Christ in Matthew 24, verses 5 through 8. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. We are in the beginning of sorrows. Have you ever wondered what that is? What is the beginning of sorrows? Simply put, it's the time preceding the great tribulation. It's a sign that indicates Christ's return is near. CNBC on last week offered a special report on the doomsday clock and doomsday preppers. Listen in in light of the prophesied famine. The Doomsday Clock. It estimates how close we are to a civilization-ending apocalypse. Right now, it's set at 100 seconds to midnight. That's the closest it's ever been to the witching hour. The Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists say we are at doom's doorstep. To blame, they say, security threats, a lack of climate policies, and an insufficient response to the pandemic rolled into one big mess. Scientists set the clock back in January before Russia even invaded Ukraine. They say the clock is meant to encourage the world to work together to ease the threats facing all of us, but some prefer we just get ready in case midnight strikes. Here's CNBC's Rahel Solomon. Doomsday end of the world preppers, once synonymous with fringe fanatics, hoarding supplies suddenly look a lot less crazy these days. Jason Charles is a former New York City firefighter and proud prepper. 
My definition of a prepper is somebody who prepares for anywhere between small emergencies to large emergencies. This mask is a nuclear biological chemical mask. Jason, who also hosts the Angry Prepper channel on YouTube with 117,000 subscribers, has spent decades gearing up for just about every disaster imaginable. This is what a prepper closet in the city looks like. My food supply will last for two years for four people my wife, my son, my daughter, and then we even have food supply for the dog. All in, Jason spent thousands on his arsenal of supplies, gear, and training. His best guess on the total cost? Over 60 grand. And he's not alone. In reality, the doomsday preppers can actually contribute to the food shortages by stockpiling. But prophetically speaking, we do need to be prepared, but we need to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And we need to believe in a miracle, wonder, working God that can multiply food for those who follow him. Listen, in 2015, John Paul Jackson prophesied about a Revelation 6 type of famine in the United States. Listen into this prophetic word about a famine and two pandemics. There's many things happening in the world, but I'm going to be focused primarily here in the United States. Drought is going to continue to escalate in the lower half of the United States. So much so that just as it says in Revelation chapter 6, a loaf of bread, there may be bread, but what it's going to cost you will be enormous. So much so that they will have to put guards on trucks to keep trucks from being robbed for their food. Earthquakes will not only strike coastal areas, but even the Midwest of the United States. There will be places where hail falls and it will be over a foot thick of hail. There will be softball sizes of hail with 24 inches of rain in 24 hours. There will be Tornadoes with such force that automobiles will become airborne missiles. The Lord told me that there would be a pandemic that, that, that came, but the first one would prove to be little but fear, but the second one that comes would be serious. So there's a pandemic that is going to be coming. There will be changes in our gravity. As... There's a shift happening, it will happen in the magma of the earth. Changes will happen in the gravity fields. Look for, look for notices, notifications of changes in the gravity fields. And also look for, with that will come uh, heating of the ocean's floor and the ocean's changing temperatures. And that will end up killing a lot of fish and everything else. In the ocean. Through the pages of the Bible, we see God gives strategies for surviving through a famine. God gave Elijah a strategy. God gave others. God gave Pharaoh a dream of seven years of abundance, followed by seven years of famine. Then Joseph gave the interpretation and came up with a wise strategy to save the world. God will do the same for us. We must incline our ear to his heart. We must listen in to the still, small voice of God. Just like he instructed Elijah, he will instruct us. We must not let fear get into our hearts. So how do we pray? Pray for the church to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that everything else we need will be provided, will be added to us. Pray for the food supply chain to run smooth with no contamination and no disruption. Pray that creative innovations would emerge to reduce the impacts of food contamination and food shortages and famines. Pray for the miraculous intervention of God so the oil and the flour do not run dry. Thanks for listening to Praying the News. Please give us a five-star review wherever you listen to podcasts and share this with your friends. Make sure you're subscribed. Until next time, keep praying the news. In 2007, the Holy Spirit woke me up in the middle of the night and told me he would bring a third great awakening to the nation. I believe we're going to see the greatest great awakening in the history of the world and it will spill over into the nations of the earth for the glory of God. 
I believe we'll see a movement greater than all previous moves of the God put together. And I know it's predicated on prayer. The Awakening Prayer Hub's mission in any city is to draw a diverse group of intercessors who have one thing in common, to contend for the Lord's will in its city, state, and nation. Bishop Bill Hammond, Lou Engel, Cindy Jacobs, Mike Bickle, James Gall, Alveda King, and many others are standing with us. Will you start a hub or find a hub in your city at awakeningprayerhubs.com?